did I really do? What did, what did we really do? Um, we needed more funding. We needed more money to 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 turn around the decline. Yep. Um, so we started taking equity in the things that we span out rather than just spinning them out. Um, we started a venture fund. We started investing in some of these things ourselves so that when we were right and we had the right market vision, we would get an enduring benefit. And so um, we did that. But, but what did we really do? We really said, you know, it's not good enough just to invent anymore. We've got to start not with the brilliant science. We don't want to lose the brilliant science, but, but that can't be all we do. And what we're going to do different going forward is we're going to go out into Australia and we're going to figure out what are the big problems that Australia needs to face, like getting to net zero, like dealing with climate change, like the fact that China and the US are inventing all the technology and we're not, you know, how are, we, how are we going to navigate that? What are we going to invest in that's going to give us some unique advantage? So basically we did what I said. We invested in health. We invested in, in um, medical technology. We invested in agriculture. We invested in resources and materials, those areas. Um, and we actually wrote a market vision for Australia, and that's what directed our investments. And, you know, in, in terms of that market vision working, one of the things we predicted in the market vision was um, some kind of disease X, either a pandemic or a superbug or any microbial resistance. But we predicted that things were going to get bad at some point in the future. Yeah. So in 2016, we invested quite heavily in um, creating the capability to deal with such a such a disease. And four years later, when COVID hit, um, we were already working with the team at Oxford. We were all, already working with. Um, the UN around vaccines. And so we're able to start to manufacture vaccines in Australia. And then we work with CSL to help them mass produce Australia's first vaccine. That's a great example of market vision working. Now, we didn't know COVID was going to happen, but 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 we, on balance of probabilities, we predicted that something like that was going to happen in the next sort of 10 to 20 years. So we better be ready for it. And it, and it, and it, it paid off remarkably well for the organization. Um, not that the pandemic didn't hurt us. We lost about a hundred million in revenue <laughs> because of the pandemic, but, but overall um, everything else was so successful that we grew Sorrow's revenue by 400 million more than any other strategy. And we, we doubled the value that the organization produced and it made doubling the value um probably took 50 years before. So we did it in five through this market vision driven innovation strategy. So to say it worked is probably an understatement. It worked better than anyone expected, including me, mate. I, I, I you know, you don't, strategy usually doesn't work that well, you know, but, but just, we just, we got it right. And, and, and that, and it, and it changed the culture of the place. It changed the way people thought. And, and today when you go to Syro, and you ask people what they're doing, you know, instead of saying, oh, we do great science and we're brilliant, they say we're solving drought for Australia or we're fixing climate change or we're helping grow the agricultural industry. They're, they're much more deliberate about, you know, who's the customer, what problem are we solving and how are we creating value by doing it? And they're still doing it by great science. The science quality I, I, we doubled it a lot, but but we couldn't we couldn't make the science quality any better. It was already it was already fantastic, but but we did double the value that the place creates, which is why it grew.